my favorite pottery people. I'm Sarah. We're in the studio today. I'm going to take you on a sneaky peek at Sarah Walton Pottery, kind of behind the scenes. So I'm going to show you my studio. I'll give you a little tour, show you in the drawers and all the stuff that's, you know, that helps me produce my pieces. And I'm going to show you how I organize things. And I'm even going to show you my camera gear and setup. So if you're interested in that, you're going to want to stay tuned to this video. So by no means do you have to have a large space in order to produce pottery. You don't. You, you can actually produce it in a very small footprint, a, a kitchen counter, a place where you can glaze. You know, if you're going to be doing a wheel, you need a place for your wheel. And uh, if you're going to have a kiln at home, then you need a place for that too. So, um, but when I first started my pottery journey, I started off in literally the corner right over there. Tiny little dingy, dark, no lighting. And I have evolved and added, basically I have the entire basement to myself. So I have been able to expand over the years. I, the first piece of equipment I bought was my wheel and I, I didn't have a kiln. So I used to have to fire at the studio. So I was able to work in a very small footprint. I have a giant basement, so I'm able to spread out and that I do because otherwise it gets too cluttery. I, I can be messy. So I've organized my studio in zones. I have, first off, I have my glazing station or section where I keep all of my glazes. I typically do most of my glazing right here on this table, my brushing on. I also have a throwing station, so where I actually throw my pieces. Um, but I do have a shipping area where I keep all of my shipping supplies so that they're handy. And then I have another workstation plus rolling carts. Everything's on wheels in order to make my life nice and simple. Okay, so, sorry, I have allergies and so my nose is always itchy. It doesn't matter. Allergy pills, no allergy pills, not in the studio, outside. I just, it's just the way it is. Okay, so let's start with this table. So what I'm going to do is move the camera around and... Uh, I, I actually filmed this three times. It was just too shaky and I would have given you all motion sickness. Do your cat making her appearance. Come on. There she comes. Oopsie. There's my girl. You want to keep me on track, are you? Making sure I work hard? Yeah. The size perspective, this piece, this table is six feet wide four feet deep and um, what's lovely is the plywood comes in sheets that were prefabricated I could easily get it in my car and screw it together a nice sturdy table it's nice you know for hand building um, and I have room from some additional tools etc I also have it has storage space underneath you need to have damp like containers to store things in this these are damp what I call damp boxes and they're basically a box that has plaster bat inside. You make it, you, pour, you make the plaster, you pour it inside to fit inside the container and it will keep clay moist indefinitely, which is amazing if you're, especially if you're a part-time potter um, or even full-time, Never mind. what am I saying part-time? It's just one of those things that's just, it's, excellent because it will keep the clay regardless nice and moist so if you you know you know you're going to be away for a minute and you don't you know you might not be able to get back to your the piece that you've used or thrown or created like handles maybe you make batch handles you can leave them in a damp box and it will keep them usable for months really so this is a smaller one and i have a larger one for taller pieces um i did film how i made these because i had to uh, replace the ones that I did have. I had used regular plaster of Paris, which is not a good choice. If you have, if you have to make the choice, you really want to make sure you get the uh, pottery plaster, which I went and got from my pottery supply. And honestly, it's very primo. It's very, it's, 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 it feels denser, stronger than the, the plaster of Paris. I always had to uh, line my damp box with, with newspaper, and then that got moldy and it was, uh, but I mean, it worked, but it was just a mess. These are amazing. Yeah. So now 
I recently acquired, and I'm so excited. Let's go through this. I shouldn't talk while I move around because then I gotta edit that all out. So lighting, not the best in my face right now, but okay. So, you don't need me, you just need this. I recently, try again. I recently acquired, it's used, but it's still very exciting. What is it you ask? It is a slab roller. Just a, this, the mini, the Bailey mini slab roller, 16 inch and Excellent for rolling out clay in a very controlled, systematical approach. It's little, but you know, I don't really do hand building that much, though I've gotten into it a little bit. I do have a question for you guys that are hand builders and have a slab roller, and maybe you have one like this. So it has this little bar, and it was second hand. I got a good deal, got it on Facebook Marketplace. And you can see it's got like um, a texture to help grab the actual slab mat. This is the slab, the slab mat. Let me get this out of. So it's got texture to grab the slab mat. Um, but what I find is it's it's leaving little grainy, sandy bits all over. You know when I use it. Uh, do, you, do you have a solution? Does anyone have a solution for that? Is there anything I can put on this that would help prevent it from, you know, you know, falling off? Because I don't want it to fall into my clay. I'm very careful with it, but um, just let me know if, if you guys have a suggestion for that. So the fact I was able to find that on Facebook Marketplace, you know, look, you'll find all kinds of great used ceramic tools, pottery tools. There are kilns out there. Um, I haven't found a elect like a digital one there's a lot of the older like what i have uh, available i'm looking for a digital one so that i don't have to do this and thank you for the suggestion of just changing up the controller um you had me thinking and i i knew about that when i first got my kiln and um i just haven't i forgot about it and i need to look into it again because that might be a viable option however she's just such a you know there's other things with that kiln that i don't really want to invest that kind of money into um, anyways, still to be determined. Okie dokie. So, alright. You have seen this in my videos, but this is all of my brush on glazes. I keep them in this area. I have, I keep them by, mostly by brands. So these are all my Potter's Choice at top. Then I have my Amica, oh sorry, my Mako here. And then I have some Coyote, my Spectrum, my um, Celadons and Underglazes. And then also down here, I keep like just odds and ends, things that are important. Let me zoom in there. That I find very useful. That's, you know, someone might actually throw out, but um, yeah, you definitely need lots of buckets. Pool noodles. These are amazing. I get them from the dollar store, cut them different widths. They're great for, you know, if you're drying your handles, you pull handles, or if you even extrude handles to help form them into a, a rounded shape while they dry. It just gives them some support. I've even in a pinch made handles and put it in my damp, my damp box, my damp box like that. So that is always useful. Newspaper bits. I save all of my dish detergent well, not all of them, but I do save dish detergent containers because these are great for holding a uh, slip. I have that upside down because my black slip is, is almost empty, but it's great for holding a slip because I can easily transfer it from this into my slip. My little slip bottles when I'm doing slip trailing. Um, so that's really, they're handy dandy. So I will mix up clay on uh, on mass so I don't have to do it all the time when I when the mood strikes and I want to uh, and I want to uh, do some slip trailing I have it handy I have a selection of dipping glazes these are Mako dipping glazes 
blue surf i've got sandstone i've got my power turquoise which is laguna this is where i keep i try to keep like like things together so that you know it, it just kind of makes sense glazes and and that sort of stuff all together i keep my under uh, my um what's i call it uh, mason stains here i always use my um banding wheel this is its little spot because usually when i'm glazing banding wheel up top here out of the pottery plaster i made a new um board in order to i really need to address this piece of clay uh, <laughs> i've been busy anyways uh, so i've got to wedge this up but this is where i reclaim my clay so it's a nice big slab of plaster just to help absorb the water out and i'll show you kind of that whole process of how I or this the workflow not so much how I do it so but that's where I keep this now oh so still we, we can talk about expenses um, this is part of two I have two of this exact unit and this was put out on garbage day on someone's you know boulevard and scooped it up brought it home so it had like this thing is um, the, the shelves are very strong. They're like melamine, but the, there's particle board inside and one corner had broke. So I have that over my packing station, but it works amazing because it's plastic. I can wipe it up like easy peasy when, when things spill on it, it needs to be cleaned again. But um, yeah, so keep an eye peeled when you are walking or if you're driving somewhere, if you see something like that, that is amazing for storage. So totally free. This one for my glazes i actually picked up if you're in canada you know about canadian tire and that was a canadian tire goodie but i waited till it was on sale 50 percent off because they do good sales don't buy it full price don't don't over here we're just going to move right along and i have this little station is i like things on wheels whenever possible so this is a cart that's on wheels it houses a lot of different goodies. This is another, this used to have wheels, I lost them. <laughs> um, and, but it's just a great storage unit. Keep my glue gun, because yes, I glue on the string with my little tags when I'm shipping things. I keep all of my little post-it notes in here, other goodies, things like that, clamps, etc. You, you, you'd be amazed on the stuff that you'll actually use. So this is just a nice little storage. This little gem, I got this on Amazon, love it. There's like a plastic, this was like a desk cover or whatever. It kind of got, never really worked well as a, it was cheap uh, as a desk cover. I think I got that from Ikea. And um, anyways, it's great so it doesn't let stuff go through into the drawers. But I have all kinds of different things inside that I use. These are two molds that I made with the plaster. And I need to go back to the pottery store to get some more plaster because I have a whole lot of other ideas of things that I want to make um, some more hump molds. Um, this was actually an Ikea bowl that I really like the profile for. I would have liked, it was actually deeper and I could have made it bigger, but I ran out of the plaster. So um, it's this deep and it's, I mean, it works. And I was so excited. I used it too soon. So I got a little bit of um, mold on it, but then I, I bleached it out, left it in the sun for a couple of days. It's now fully cured. You do have to wait till they cure before you use it. It's a good advice. So Anyways, I have these two. This came from a dollar store bowl that I really like the shape and I made a little, another um, uh, plaster, solid plaster. I mean, it's heavy, but you can work on it and it's great to create some nice shapes. Anyways, now that I have a slab roller, and again, you don't need to use a, have a slab roller in order to work. You can use a rolling pin, okay? That works too. So I'm just gonna zoom in here. What I've done is I have labeled my drawers just with a label maker, just to help find things a little bit better. So this is where I keep like my, my pumps for um, soap dispensers and my different shape, different size, oil or wine pours, alcohol pours, other corks. I got these from my pottery supply. I got this stuff from Amazon. Again, I'll put links below just to speed it up for yourself. Different size corks, you know, if you're doing bottles and stuff. So I try to keep things nice and organized. I'm gonna zoom in. And then of course I have letters. These are great fun for um, if you want to create, you know, little 
signs or things on your pieces. And then what I did was I alphabetized the actual container. So I put all the letter A's in one spot. So it's just easier to find when you're trying to spell something out. Um, so this is great and you can just add to them. I ended up getting these from my pottery supply. However, they sell them on Amazon now. Like everything's on Amazon. They never, you, honestly, you couldn't get any pottery stuff on, on, um, on Amazon just like two years ago. Now, like everything's available. So, or a lot of things. Anyways, those are great. I'll list them below. Really wonderful. I got some slip trailing, some of my large things that I use, lots of cutouts, different shapes. I keep them all kind of stored neatly, all my sanding stuff. So you've seen me use these blocks. And you know what's really amazing, if you've never tried it before, is this is called a waterproof drywall screen. And it's amazing for smoothing out bare clay. So really good stuff. Hopefully I gave you some ideas there. And if I did, you know what you need to do. Right over here, right there, Coco. She's pointing at it. Do it. Subscribe. Come on. It's free. Also, don't forget to like and share. It helps this small channel grow. Then you can see all of the ins and outs because I don't, I tell, I tell it all. Every little bit, whatever I'm doing, I share. And if you've got any questions, be sure to leave a comment below because I do answer them. I answer every single question and I love hearing from you guys. You also are offer a plethora of information so read the comments because you know what you're going to learn from all of the amazing people who are part of this little community that we have here on youtube so thank you for all of you who have already subscribed and a huge thank you to mud brick pottery for buying me 10 coffees thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you honestly yes the money is going to be put away to help me save for that kiln i really really appreciate it all right, back to studio tour. So this is another station, and I am often found right here at this end, ahead of the table, um, because I can watch. <laughs> so if I'm down here, I can watch YouTube, Netflix, um, whatever. Now, I've gone down the whole chateau, like refurbishing thing. Oh my goodness, I just love all these these people that have moved and bought this, these dilapidated chateaus and are fixing them up. Oh, I want to do that. Oh. Anyways, I, I can watch it for hours. Um, it's anyways, so this is one of my favorite workstations. It is also the first table that I got it too. Someone threw it out. It was on the curb. It is solid. So yes, it has a failing finish. So you would not want to work directly on top of this finish because you would not want to pick up some of the paint and whatnot into your finish. What I've done is I've added, um, this is called hardy board. This is a hardy board. It's, it's a concrete backer for shower enclosure. So you put this behind the tiles and it's ultra smooth. It wipes up easily. It's very absorbent. Um, so if you're wedging clay, you gotta be careful because or putting any clay down for any amount of time because it's going to create a crust so you got to be careful with that um, I have other boards that I use it's just a really nice smooth finish to to work on um, and easy to wipe up that's really why I went with it I am going to change it out for a nice piece of, of plywood I'll just get Home Depot to cut it down to size for me but it is a nice size workstation it's I didn't measure it I think I'm gonna say this is three feet by five feet so it's just slightly smaller than the other table but again it was a dumpster dive it were you know curbside finding keep your eyes peeled it's you know they're they're awesome little little finds this table is also a table I pack my shipments on and that's because my packing all of my packing supplies are over here so I will clear it off I have my computer and my label printers and all that so this here I just bought a um, like a small cheap little uh what's gonna call it curtain rod and this is my packing paper one of the packing papers it stretches and it hooks onto itself and it's like a bubble wrap that's you know environmentally friendly biodegradable it's paper so i use this as a part of my packing um process so i will add i typically will work right here uh, trimming my pieces, adding any detail. This is it's just a very comfortable spot um, and it works for me. So things splash and that's why I just cover it up. 
so that, you know, you don't ruin things unnecessarily. Um, I have everything on buckets. Buckets are on wheels. I keep all of this has got my reclaimed clay that I haven't gotten around to. Buckets. As you can see, I've got a lot of the buckets. I at one point was separating, you know, about my white clay from my black clay and so on. Oh, I've stopped doing that, but I just need to reclaim those uh, goodies as such because I've gone that way. But you see, I have the buckets. They're on wheels. I have them. They're on wheels, so they makes it much easier to mo move things around when it's on wheels. And I got those at the dollar store. So, you know, you can get more expensive ones. are not the best. They're just cheap little, but they move things around, which, again, you don't want to be, you know, wrecking your back. Where I keep my shipping materials. So, again, if you are going to be shipping anything, again, if you're going to have an Etsy um, store. So, this is um, packing peanuts. These are biodegradable. This I got from Staples and I like it because I can order one bag rather than having to get too many because of space. It's just, you know, I don't want to have all this uh, with packing peanuts. I keep a variety of box sizes here for shipping, so I'm ready to go. I have tissue paper because this is part of my packing shipment area as well. I have different strings that I use to bundle it up because, you know what, unboxing is equally as important as it's part of the experience so take time thinking about how you're going to package your products up if you're going to be shipping them and if you're working at markets and fairs you want to think about that too anyways so this is it i keep clay down here as well some clay and i have over there i always keep things by brand i find it easier and then I, of course i sort them by by the the color so it's easier to find things so i have like all my m340 m350 m390 all in little areas all right if you find out a friend is doing some construction and they've got little remnant pieces of drywall, snatch it up. Take it. You can cut it to size, different sizes, and then you actually use um, uh, duct tape to prevent the, the plaster from you know, coming out. But you can use these on top of a table surface because this is going to be absorbent and you can use it as a workstation. So it's actually, these are great. I have a whole pile pile of them in all different sizes okay so that is my shipping station and what's great is I take all of the stuff when I'm shipping from here and I move them over to that table so that I can actually pack up your goodies um, I have I've made all of these little guys come on in I should show them this it's a little bit more intimate and dark very pink in this part of my <laughs> studio with the uh, pink fiber fiberglass insulation anyways I have all of these I made these all these little arrows that I put on the side of my package I've got a small fragile and I designed these myself and then I print them using that little Munbin printer which are which is great so I saved money on buying those types of things I even made my own little um, extra little thank you guys great for like you know organic wrapping um, this is where I have all of my shipping gear and so forth my computer this is an old computer this is this computer was my office computer and it's about 10 years old now uh, it's Apple uh, it doesn't update anymore so it's down here it acts as my TV <laughs> and then it acts as my um, where I can print off my shipping labels so this I use, they're called, it's by Munbin, and it prints my shipping labels um, right here. I'm able to purchase my uh, postage. I use, in Canada, I use a, a company called Chit Chats, um, and it's, it's cheaper. So if you're a fellow Canadian and you're looking for a way to reduce your shipping costs, uh, Chit Chats is, they still use Canada Post and uh, USPS. I think that's our United States Post. Yes, USPS and, and so forth. They still use it, but they just have a way of doing it less expensive. So definitely look into them if you're not already. So chit chats. It, I am not sponsored. It's just what I do. Um, anyways, this particular machine doesn't work entirely well with their interface, 
unfortunately, but I found a workaround. So if you're struggling, you have, let's say you have a mun bin and you're using chit chat so you don't know, you know, message me and I'll tell you how I work around it. Um, but yeah, so I have my scale and this guy is designed as a shipping scale. It's not just a kitchen scale, but I can use it to weigh other things as well. It's very accurate. Um, and so I use this. I'm able to still update my all of my web settings here on my computer. I just buy the the labels. These are from Mumbin. They are, this is a thermal printer, so it's not a ink printer. It doesn't use ink, which is amazing. And uh, so I buy the round. These are the, the thing. You know me. Pink is my my color, so I have a couple of pink stickers. Believe it or not, I I do test tiles from time to time. So this is the Plainsman Clay M340. This is how I do it. I actually, you know those little letters and numbers, I stamp in, will stamp each piece with a number. So on the side, we'll have the number and then the clay body. And then I can, I'll just jot it down on the front if I've run over it with ink, it doesn't take long, but just that's just done with a pen. And then I track all of my, my test tiles. I created, okay, so I created this book for myself. That is who I designed it for. And I decided, since I share, I share everything, um, I decided to put it up on web, my website. So it's something, if you're interested, you are more than welcome to download it. It's, it's a digital download. Sorry. It's a digital download. So you purchase it. And as soon as you do, you'll get an email and you're able to download the attachment. So save it to your computer. And it's just my way of organizing my life because I can be a bit of a scatterbrain. And, um, you know, I, I, I just I chalk it down to being one of those artists that can get a bit, you know, scattered. Anyways, so it was it was designed for me. Like I said, I have different sections. So like my shop list. So little things that, you know, I might be watching something on 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 YouTube and I'm like, oh, I need that and so forth. I just keep it going. Shop list, I have my daily focus, so so forth, so on. I also have sheets there. I got a, like a calendar. And the reason it, it's for 2020, 2023, 2024 is because I've only put the dates to remember for those years. So I physically jotted them down on the document. Again, you can still use this beyond. So once you download it, you're able to reprint the, the pages as many times as you want and you print the pages that you want or use the most. Um, so you're able to like do your calendar and sorry, I also did it so that you can print double sided. So I made a mistake on my printing, but you can see here, you're able to print so that it goes on double siding for yourself. So it's a great way to plan ahead with with things. I also have a section in here for all of my product designs. So I'm able to put my size, so what, how much, you know, what clay I use, the weight of the clay in kilograms or pounds, what the, what the size was, height, and then of course the base. So if I'm trying to replace it, I haven't finished this because this particular piece is still waiting for me to glaze it. It is this bowl. So this beautiful beauty of a bowl and I need to get to that glazing later and then I'm going to jot down what I actually did so that I can repeat, you know, repeat it. On the back side, you're able to write down like how I did the foot. So I, I spoke that I did a, I said my foot ring. So I did a fine foot ring, so it's not a very deep ring uh, because my piece was thin to begin with. I didn't, I didn't leave a lot of clay on the bottom. Uh, I also put that, I put my stamp on the side here. I made this specifically for somebody and they like that I, when I put my stamp on the side, I hope I'm not, I'm all in focus here that I'm actually showing this on camera. So I put my stamp on the side because they, they say they like it. And then I did my ring. So this is going to get glazed up soon, but uh, I'll add my other details later. So I've already put down here that I, I did two times the 04 BIS fire on this. Because remember I, so it's been misfired twice, but other things. Anyways, it's it's really useful for me. I find just so I can go back where I place the glaze, etc., and other fine details. I also have my to-do list. I'm a person that's the only way because otherwise, uh, my my niece and my good good friends have <laughs> recently diagnosed me diagnosed me with. They think I have a ADHD. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let me try to keep myself sorted. So this is how I record my test tiles right here. So I have a chest tile tracker. So my clay body and I actually added, so for instance, here, 
test tile number two, M340. So these are my Plainsman M340. Test tile number two, it's yeah, winter wood times two, lavender mist times two. So I can keep track of my test tiles. So I just, because I have these in the back under, you know, all a whole pile of bins. So if I pick out a color, I can then come to my book, find out what I did. It works for me. Another stage where thoughts and ideas and things that just come to mind, I know where to find them because I'm a person that will write notes and then I'll never, I don't know where I put them again. So these are just all little things that I have in here. So anyways, it's just something that you may be interested in and then just put them in a binder. I did this because it keeps it, you know, my dirty clay hands, but uh, you can then reprint the pages as much as you want. So I have these two, like these two towers and they are on wheels and that makes it easy to roll them around my studio. They have adjustable shelving, not adjustable. I just have different posts in here um, and then I can add or take away, they slide out. I had Home Depot cut up these two by, uh, they're two by two because that's what fits the shelf and I use a nice fine smooth plywood just to make sure that again my wares sit on it and it, you know it's not bumpy I originally I made that mistake when I first made my my shelves um, I used like I used construction grade plywood it was cheap I was like ah, I don't need it oh yeah garbage doesn't work uh, not for this you really want to invest in the right stuff because you, you, you just don't waste don't waste your money buying you know a lesser quality buy buy the smoother high quality stuff so I've got the shelves here and then I can just screw in additional shelves as needed but so far I find I think it's about a foot from on this one and probably about every six inches on this one so I get a, a good height between shelves and then I can add and take away I installed my um, what's it called whiteboard and I can write down the things that I'm planning on making then that helps me understand what I need to make so if I'm gonna be making some of my marble mugs then I need to make pink clay so it just helps me because otherwise I can be spinning my wheels <laughs> can you tell <laughs> all right so I have over here something that's very important too keeping my dust down purifier, my air cleaner. So I got this. I ordered this, leave it on the home shopping network. And it's, I love it, it's great. It, there are probably better ones out there for this type of environment, but that's what I have and that's what I use. So just to keep dust down, that's why I keep it where it's the biggest and the most dusty zone. So I am all about the wheels and my cart. Um, I can pull this over to where I throw, which is right here. I can bring it over when I'm trimming. So these have all of my, when I'm actually trimming on the wheel, I'll have this side facing me so I can have all of the, my goodies that I need right here. Um, when I'm throwing, I have this side because this has my throwing stuff and my cutoff wires and so forth. If I'm glazing, I'll have it near. I've got my sticks. Um, uh, those types of things. If I'm grinding things and fixing goodies, I have all of my Dremel bits in here. I recently bought my, you can see this, my Dremel attachment, so I can leave my Dremel hanging there and I can actually just work using this. Makes it a bit easier um, instead of having to hold that heavy, heavy thing in my hand. But I love this cart because I can wheel it around. I got my heat gun handy. And that's why I have my little exterior plug right here so I can plug everything into this extension, which makes my life simple. So things on wheels, I can easily spin it around, get what I need, where I need it, and then tuck it away. So this is my throwing station. This is where I do it. My wheel, it's a Brent C, love it. Um, I find it's really easy to work. I can throw from here and okay, I have a mirror not because I'm being vain <laughs> it's you know you either I can have a mirror on my station here and so I can see especially when I'm trimming or doing stuff so I don't have to you know bend over as much I had the mirror and you know what it's a basement and this is gonna give me extra light so for the having a mirror here of this size it's bouncing the light from my ceiling I'm getting twice the light so 
I did it more from a standpoint from a lighting and of course I can wipe it up nice and easy. So I, oh, and I free up the space on my workstation here, so on my wheel. Okay, so my wheel is here. I have this big bucket, it's got lots of water in it. So after I finish throwing, I literally will, after I finish throwing, I will take the throwing water that I have in here and I literally will dump it in here. Um, overnight, the clay settles to the bottom, the water comes to the top. I use one of these little guys and I siphon off the water into back into the clean bucket because everything would be cleaned out into there. Um, and then I will take that water and this is on wheels. I take that water and dump it into this bucket. And I can use this water for cleaning. So it's it, it depends, but that's what I do. So if you're in a similar position where I am where you may not have a sink handy, this works marvelously. You really do not want to be throwing clay or getting clay down into your, your um your sink and your pipes that you know you're gonna have to call a plumber with that so this is my setup um, I put it keep a sponge here that helps absorb water that would otherwise land onto my um, my table here and it, it works I have a plastic container this is where I'll put all the balls I'll keep all the lumps of clay in here um, when I go to throw so I'll wedge them up put them there and then they're nice and easy for me to get at this is my bat mate. It's a chamois, so it gets soft as soon as you wet it. Uh, my bat mate. Um, I have lots of <laughs> these little guys. These are amazing. So just buy some pots from, you know, from whatever, the garden center. They're inexpensive terracotta pots, perfectly round. They're great for keeping your piece in round after you've trimmed, or you can actually trim right on it. So you don't have to make a chuck. It works. Um, I also have right here. I use I got these guys on Amazon. These are just um, bamboo, so they don't they're great with in water. Um, it's like a little plate rack, and I that's great for my bat system. I have the Dirty Girl. These are the, this is the Dirty Girl bat system. Um, I'm gonna get that the bleaker one. It looks exactly the same. I don't know if these are gonna fit in it or not. I'm not sure, but it's much less expensive and it like it looks the same um, and I might try that and see how that works for me it's like half the price so why not if I have to change this out midway I'll do that um, but yes you want to keep your bats upright I have larger bats over here so when I'm throwing plates or larger bowls all right so we'll go up way up and I've got all of these things dried up um, this is ready for bis fire. All of this is ready for bis fire. So I've got some bottles. These are gonna be some oil bottles that I've made. They'll be great for. Uh, they're ready to go in the kiln. I got some some more marble mugs in here. Got some large bowls. This is the my first bowl that I made using that that um, hot mold. So I'm very excited. I made that. Can't wait for that to get fired. And then I'm going to use these as little test tiles, glaze some pieces, see how it looks on, you know, so I don't keep ruining things. And then, um, yeah, anyways, so lots of goodies here that are drying and ready for the kiln. So I will fire that up tomorrow. And all right, so once everything gets fired and it needs glazing, this is where I put it. So it's, it's kind of sort of double duty because all of this is going to get moved out by the time this stuff gets fired. So it'll just be replaced. I will have glazed them because it needs to go into the kiln. So it's sort of a back and forth between these um, towers and the wall. Again, you don't need to have big space. So when I started my pottery journey, I got my wheel. It was here. I had the mirror here. And I had a little plastic table here, and that's it. This, this was my studio. I had one light, it was dark and dingy. I'm gonna insert a picture so you can see. But it worked, it still worked. So you do not have to have the space that I have. I'm, I'm blessed and I love it uh, that I can spread out. So this is kind of how I rig it up. I have my camera in the middle. I will take it off of the tripod and sometimes just shoot freehand. 
um, just because I can get better angles on the fly. Um, I have the soft box, their lighting box, because they have a diffuse light on them. So they help to blur out. Sorry, it's gonna really overexpose on camera, but there's no harsh light being directed at my piece. And then I have ring lights on either side, which are gonna help flood the side of the box to give me great light. And the nice thing about this box too is, you know, you can take it outside and on a sunny day. And it's just gonna, you know, knock down the glare from the sun. So again, I use, I like the outdoors for Instagram and taking pictures like that. But for my website, I just want, I don't want to distract from the piece. So I typically like to shoot it in this particular type of format. So this is my camera. It's a Canon DSLR. Um, love it. It's an older one. I've had it now a few years. So, um, so my lighting setup. So if I'm on this side and I'm yappity yap, 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 yap. <laughs> you know me yapping. This is, this is kind of the lighting I have on either side uh, with my camera in the middle. And um, you can adjust the lights for warmth and so forth. I then also have this little arm, which I've recently begun using a little bit more for aerial shots um, and hold steady. I can put my phone in it. And then I have another one on this side, which I can also use for aerial shots. These lights I got from Home Depot and then I ordered the soft diffusers on top. Again, just to help keep things nice and bright in my studio. Um, make it as feel as lighting as, as you know. Anyways, and I've got these are new LED lights that I had I recently put in and they are amazing. My friend rigged it up so when I <laughs> turn my lights on from upstairs, they automatically turn on, but it just helps to give me a little bit more light and I'm gonna actually buy a few more just to, again, keep it nice and bright. Lighting is essential. So yeah, so these guys here on wheels, so they're easy to move around the studio or to clean underneath. Um, but that's that's it. That's This is Sarah Walton Pottery Studio 2023 version as a whole, like that. Hopefully that didn't make anybody dizzy. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, and I hope you were able to, you got some ideas on things that you can do yourself. And I, the biggest point I want you to take away is that you do not need a lot of space. You can work from a very small, organized location. Um, again, I have spread out because I can. If I was, you know, in a, a different situation, I would be working off my dining room table, you know, like you, you make do with what you have um, and expand slowly and you will enjoy this craft immensely. It uh, is such an amazing creative outlet. So I'm so glad you tuned into this week's video. I'm glad you came into my home and I hope to see you again in the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's free. Come on now. Who doesn't like free? And don't forget to like it. It means the world to me. And while you're at it, don't be shy. Leave a comment. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching.